Hi, my Tubies and my Teletubbies. It's me, Sheila True Love, and I am going to share with you uh, signs that you are in an abusive relationship or before you even get into a relationship, how to recognize if the person is abusive. And right now we're here with my baby, MJ, who I totally love him. MJ, I think I introduced you to him in another video that I have. Yeah, he his channel is MJ Harris. And like he says, he says, spread this video around, share this with everybody. You know, he likes to um, try to help as many people as he can. Um, he's gay, happily gay. You know, that's between him and God. I'm not here to judge. Uh, but he has so much... Uh, vital and useful information and he is going to <clears throat> help you to recognize when you are in an abusive relationship or when the person is abusive and the first point that he brought out in terms of they move too fast they do everything too fast and I can identify with that because that's exactly what I experienced with my ex moved way too fast Anyway, listen in. Here's MJ Harris. So I'm going to tell you about the one who I was with who was abusive and how he moved too fast. Y'all hear me some thumbs up? All right. Y'all want to tell you the story? Now, he's in an outfit. It's Halloween. So he's in a Superman outfit. So don't think he's crazy. He's just wearing a Superman outfit. All right. I remember what fans sent me this. They sent me this. Okay. Oh, you want the story? Ooh, okay. Ooh, Lori Lynn said you're describing my soon-to-be ex, ex-wife. Child, honey, they move too fast. Okay, see so y'all thumbs up. I see all y'all thumbs up. So, I meet this guy. This I actually was in a relationship with him. I've mentioned him on camera, but I never give names. So, all right, I'm in a relationship. Well, we weren't in a relationship yet. I met him, and we go on a date, right? I met him at a party. I'll start from the beginning. I'm at this party. And I'm standing by myself. He comes over to me. And he says to me, um, he's like, excuse me, how you doing? I was like, I'm fine. And he was like, he's like, um, do you want to have a seat? I see you standing. I said, oh, oh, okay, sure. So I take a seat. We start talking. And so I'm like, so we're just chit-chatting. It's nice little chit-chatting. I'm like, well, I have to go. Um, it was really nice talking with you, but I do have to leave. And he's like, um, he's like, you going to walk to the car by yourself? I said, yeah, I was planning to walk to the car by myself. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm fine with that. And he says, no, I'll walk you to your car. Very, very forceful. I was young, and I figured that his force was a sign of, oh, he's, you know, this is a man who's a man, baby. He's going to walk in my car. So he walked me in my car. At the car, he says, let's exchange numbers. I said, well, I, I'm, I said I'll take yours. So he gives me his number. And then, so a couple of days later, he takes me out to lunch, right? So I reached out to him. He was cute and very charming. Um, he takes me out to lunch. We go out to lunch. We had such a wonderful time. Such a wonderful time. The next day, he says, he sends me a text message first thing in the morning. that says, I can't get you off my mind. I said, it was only lunch. He says, I can't get you off my line, <laughs> off my mind. Can I take you to dinner tonight? I said, okay, you take me to dinner. We go to dinner. The next day, he texts me again. You're still on my mind. Can I take you out again tonight? I said, okay, I'm young, baby. I'm like, this man want to take me out. Carolyn Andrews says, spill it. Joyce Jones said, tea, honey. She wants the tea. All right? So, listen. I'm like, he's into me. He's consistent. And when you deal with all these jokers who don't barely call you back, these old once-a-week texters, these men who you got to bust your ass to get in contact with, you know, I got to take this cape off. It's hot as fuck. So, anyway, ugh, Okay. Oh, look at this. Honey, my titties was like this. Y'all couldn't keep a shirt on me. I'd be wobbering every day like this. Anyway, so we go out again. And I'm like, he's so attentive. I get to my job on that following Monday. He got flowers for me. I'm like, whoa. So now we all know about the love bombing. I don't have to go into detail with my two bees regarding that. I'm sure we've all experienced it. Then here we are a whole week later, girl. And he says, um... Well, um, Yvonne Milton said he was sprung, baby. He was sprung. Let me tell you more about how sprung he was. So a whole week later, he says, um, why don't you come by my house for dinner? I'm going to cook you dinner tonight. I said, you going to cook me dinner? He said, I'm going to cook you dinner. I was like, well, I done been out with the man probably done five, five nights, got flowers for him and everything else and texting up the storm. He's always reached out. Let me go to dinner with him. 
So I say, let's go to dinner, right? So we, I go to his house for dinner. We sit at the house for dinner. As soon as I come, he got candle lights everywhere. Candle lights everywhere. And he had those nice recess lights, so they was dim low with the candles. I mean, baby, it was so nice. It was so cute. It was real cute. Listen, 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 listen. And so we go to dinner. I mean, we eat dinner at his house and everything like that. You know, I he I would eat a bite of food. It was so good. Next thing I know, he'd eat a bite. And he'd feed me. He'd feed me. And the next thing you know, we go up to the bedroom. Now, this is where it goes from PG-13. To, it may get a little rated off, but we all grown, right? So, we go up to the bedroom, right? We get to kiss him, Get to touch him, Get to rub him, Get to lick him, Get to everything else. Listen. All right? So, we having a good time, baby. And you know me, okay, honey? My reputation is right in these streets for a reason, okay? Okay? I come I come prepared, okay? I come right, honey. I I, I been, honey, I've never had I've never had a, a customer complaint yet. Okay? Hmm. All right? So we in there until the store real fast when my mother come out the bathroom, okay? But alright, so here's the thing. So we in there, and we going for it, going for it, going for it. And by this time, we full on, okay? We full on, okay? He need deep. Y'all hear where I'm going with this? And I'm up on it. I'm up on it. You know how when you up on it? And I'm riding and I'm riding. And I'm up on it. I'm up on it, girls. I'm up on it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? When you just, when you know you're doing it right, you know, you know what? His eyes all crisscross and everything like that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And everything in his spirit, he trying to hold on for dear life. He holding on for dear life, baby. I'm telling the story, Ma. Cover your ears, right? So anyway, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I mean, I'm, you know, whoa, honey. Honey, I'm, I'm, it's certain so late, baby, okay? I'm, I am, let me tell you, honey, okay? I'm like, you know what? Mmm. Mmm. I look so crazy in the Superman outfit. Do you hear me? <laughs> He's right. He does look crazy in the Superman outfit. I don't support all of this uh, sex escapades, you know. Uh, I don't support that part, but. Let's just finish listening to the excellent, I mean, excellent advice he's giving. Finally, right, he comes to um, climax. You don't know what that means, Ma. You don't know what that means. He comes to climax, right? And when he comes to climax, huh, Lord, I thought he was having a poltergeist moment, okay? Baby, he was going in, okay? Um, Ardonia Hawthorne says, customer service first. Yes, baby, okay? I want to make sure my Yelp reviews are right. So anyway, comes there. He gets there. He gets there. He gets there, baby, okay? And you know how when they get there, and, and this is real good and still shaking, still shaking, still shaking. So he's still shaking. He'll look at him convulsions. And so anyway... I'm right there, you know, my pride is on high, honey. I'm like, I met this man. He done sent me flowers. He done took me to lunch, took me to dinner, all this, honey. He can't get enough of me. And now he finally done got, he done finally got the goodie bag. And baby, honey, he understands this goodie bag is a, is a Birkin, honey. He understands this, that this thing is built right, okay? And then, you know, he says to me right then and there, he leans over me. He wraps his arms around me, baby. He wraps his arms around me, right? And he says to me, you want to be my girl? <laughs> that was with my ex. I had known him for a hot minute. And he's already telling me, you want to be my girl? And I was like, really? I was thrown back. Not because, uh, you know, that made me feel wanted or whatever, because I've never had a problem when it comes to uh, getting guys or men or whatever, dust mites or whatever you want to call them these days. I never had a problem with that. It's just that I never had experienced anyone who was so, you know tacky you know like goofy he was kind of goofy and tacky and i was like wow okay really i said i think that's a bit too fast dude and i left it at that you know that's kind of fast man is this mine i said what you mean he said i just feel like i can't imagine you being with nobody else i know it's soon but would it be too much for me to ask you um could, you, could could this be mine and could and could I be yours? Now I'm still in the glove. I'm in the glove, right? And I'm not backed into my mind. I just met him a week ago, and he's already been taking up every night of my week. I'm not backed in my mind. I get so I was like, I'm in the glow. I'm like, I'm what twenty five, something like that. So you know, young and dumb. I'm just happy that a man want me. And then let's be real, you throw on the abuse stuff from my from my teen years and everything like that and, and my self-esteem being low. All I wanted was a man to want me and to validate me, baby. And so him saying that, 
Baby, I didn't take it as running fast. I took it as somebody wanting me and seeing me as worthy. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes we ignore the signs of, of somebody being a little off or running too fast because the fact is that they're, them moving too fast makes us feel wanted. And because we, we so want to be wanted, we ignore the fact that this desire is coming too soon and too fast and too furious. So what I say? I, yeah, I, I understand where he's coming from in terms of that's his experience. I wasn't, it was, that was not my experience of me wanting to feel wanted. No, my experience was, this is something I've never experienced. Someone who's so, you know, rush. This is a rush. I've never had, I mean, normally guys would take their time. They date me for a while. We go out on dates. We hang out for some months and I mean months on months. And then maybe things will transition into a relationship. But this character, it was like maybe two weeks. If that, it was two weeks. And then he's like, you want to be my girl? I was like, goofy, tacky, new experience for me. So I was like, this is, no, nah, this is kind of fast, homie. I say yes. And baby, I was sucked in. I was sucked in. I was sucked in. Right? Oh. Child, it went on from there. We hanging out every night, hanging out every night, hanging out every day. You know, just enjoying each other's company. And then that leads me to the next sign, the next sign, the next sign. Right? Okay, I think he had pretty much all the signs. Let me make sure I can see this thing. Hold on. Superman got with glasses. Let me see that. Hold on. Yep, that's the good one. Couple weeks into getting to know each other, yes, he wants to spend time with me all the time. I want to spend time with him all the time. And then I was like, well, I'm going to hang out with one of my friends tonight. You know, because we've been hanging out with each other all the time. I said, I need to hang out with one of my friends tonight. I haven't seen him in a while. He said, cool. So I hung out with my friend. And this is back when Facebook was me. I don't even think Instagram was out. So I posted a picture of me and my friend out that night. Got back to his house. I mind you, I've been in his house almost every night since I met him. You know, because every time I wanted to go, no, baby, just stay the night with me. Just stay the night with me. Okay? Had a draw by the fourth, by, by, by about um, the second week. <laughs> So then he see a picture of me on, on Facebook with the guy. He's like, who's that? Is that your friend? Now, my friend's a very attractive man. I said, yeah, that's my friend. He said, um, he said, um, he said, oh. And so I was like, I was like, I said, babe, you're getting a little jealous. You're getting a little jealous. And he said, he said yeah, I think, I, I mean, I feel like maybe I am getting a little jealous. I said, wait, I said, why are you getting jealous? I said, we, I said, I said, ain't nothing going on. I'm here with you all the time. He said, I think I'm falling in love with you. And I don't know. It's just like, you know, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it's that love. I just feel like, I just, I just can't imagine you not being in my life. So, you know, I'm young, I'm dumb and I'm melting. Okay. I'm melting, baby. Grab a rag and grab a bucket, baby, because I was just through. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm like, did you, what? You love me? You falling in love with me? And that's the next sign of a potentially abusive partner. When they equate love with jealousy. Or you can say it the other way. They equate jealousy with love. You see what I'm saying? Here's the bottom line. There is nothing healthy about jealousy. Okay? But again, when you're not aware, hmm, when you deal with all your scars and your stuff from your from your unresolved pain and trauma that you haven't worked through, and a man says he loves you, you can equate his jealousy with desire. Ain't that right, Mom? Mm-hmm. Show sure is. Show sure is, okay? All right, we're going through this thing, okay? Thank you. I got to give it to him. I love the way him... And his mother's relationship is. He's very loving to his mom. He spends a lot of time with his mom. They're usually always together. A, a, a large portion. And he spends a lot of time with his sister too. His sister's real pretty. Real pretty. You know? And it's just, they're very close-knit a family. He's a very successful guy. He's, he has his own insurance company. He's a CEO of a, a very nice, a powerful insurance company. And you have to see his office. It's, oh my God. Mind-blowing. At the same time, the relationship he has with his mother, God, is to be envied. It's worse, sugar. Okay, it gets worse. All right? So time goes along, time goes along, time goes along, right? We're probably about six months into this thing at this point. And baby, the sex only got better. Okay? If, in case you were wondering, honey, you know how yesterday I talked about being digmatized, baby? 
Honey, he had me in a dick coma because I just couldn't see straight. I couldn't see life straight, baby. I didn't know what was going on. I, I didn't know. If I was in the elevator and I smelled somebody who had a cologne like his, baby, I would have left work early just to go see him. Okay? And God, that's something I have never experienced. Somebody who's able to dick whip me. I've never experienced it. I hear, I've heard several women talk about how, oh, they were dick whipped and whatever whipped or men pussy whipped. I've never experienced that in my life. I've gotten more pleasure from my rabbit than I've ever gotten from any man. And the best sex partner I ever had was my children's father. And he was a Scorpio and he was Puerto he was Hispanic. You know, but all of these people talking about he was dick whipped and put, really? Wow. It was just, and he, oh my God. It was just, I love being around him, baby. Okay. But what ended up happening from there was, you know, eventually life goes on. You start hanging out with more and more and more people. Start, you know, you got to want to, you can't just be up under each other all the time. The honeymoon phase got to end at some point, at some point in time. Right. So anyway, we go out and about. I said, we should hang out more and more with our friends, go around other people. So I remember one night we was out at, um, it was this. It was this bar in D.C. It was right off of Fourteenth Street. I forget the name of it. Hotel Monaco. Does that sound right? I don't remember the name of this place. Anyway, y'all. Okay. So we there, and this guy comes up. Now you can tell the energy between two people if they've ever been together before. You know what I mean? And this was somebody from my past who I, you know, I was a single gal, honey. You remember back when I was single in D.C., Ma? You remember that? I, now, you know, I didn't do much of nothing, did I? I didn't date around much, did I? She just gonna stay quiet on that. Honey, you know they say you've been around the block? Honey, this gal built the block, honey. I was the urban plant. I had a good time, okay? I say, you ain't gonna say I missed out on nothing, honey. All right? If there was an eligible bachelor in D.C., I was the welcoming committee, baby, okay? Let me tell you, I was young and pretty, and I used it every bit of it in every way I could. So this was somebody he walks through, but I was faithful to the one I was with by this time. So this guy walks through, and he was like, oh, hey, how you doing? And I said, oh, hey, how are you? Meet, let's call his name Thomas. I'm just making up a name. Meet Thomas. You know, because like, you know how it is when a man come around that you've been with before and your new man that you got to introduce him quickly. Do it quick, okay? And so I said, I said, meet Thomas. And then he's like, oh, how are you doing? So they shook hands, right? I thought we was cool, baby. That was not the case. On the car ride home, we were driving home that night. And um, and he would not talk. He driving, in, he driving down the highway. And he wore glasses. I'm going to put his glasses on like this. He driving in the car, right? Just driving, driving. And I put my hand on his leg like I would normally do when we driving home. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm like, baby, just a bit time. And he's sitting there. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. And I was like, I said, are you okay? You tired? And he says, he says, um, I just don't understand why you was talking to that dude so long. I said, what do you mean? He said, after you introduced him to me. You still was talking to him for so long. He's like, did y'all, like, you know, what's the deal? And I was like, nothing. I just was catching up with him. He's an old friend. He says, um, is it an old friend that you've ever been with? Did you date him? Did you have sex with him or anything like that? I don't think it's a relevant question. Frankly, I don't need to know everybody you've been with. You know how some people will ask you, now this is a child question. They ask, how, how many people you have been with? You know what my grandmother told me years ago? She says, she says, she says, don't ever count how many people you've been with. I said, why, Grandma? I remember I was like 18 when she told me. I said, why, Grandma? She said, because then you know to count. I said, well, what, what kind of, what, what is this? What, what are you talking about? She says, no. She says, if you don't know to count, then you can never lie if somebody asks you, do you know how many people you sleep with? Just say, oh, no, I don't have a number for that. She says, because if you say a high number, if you say a number that he thinks is high, then you look like a hoe to him. If you say a number that he thinks is low, then he feels threatened. He feels like he feels like he a hoe. So you just don't count, baby. She says, what's the point in counting? As long as you make sure that you're making good choices within the process do you i love my grandmother and so i never asked people about their sexual past i asked about your sexual health i never asked him about this about the sexual past i don't care who you've been with you with me now and so anyway he says have you been with them before i said i said yeah yeah i had i said we have you know one time you know how long ago the questions were turning from questions to it felt like accusations I said, I'm sorry, I'm just not understanding why these questions are coming up. Because I'm just not understanding, and he says, because I'm just not understanding why it was that y'all had that kind of chemistry. I said, chemistry? He said, I can just feel that something had clearly happened between y'all. I said, well, something had happened a year ago. You know, so, you know, you may have thought that energy from that, this ain't that. 
And then I just felt like it kept going on and on and on. And that's another sign, girls. You know, I say, girls, I'm talking to the boys too. Okay? Listen, listen when I tell you this, okay? And click share on this because there's somebody right now who's sitting up here with an abusive or potentially abusive partner. They need to hear this, baby. That's exactly why I'm sharing it with my tubies. He says to share, share, share. And hopefully you will share his video and share my videos with other people if you feel they can be helpful to them because that's what I'm in the market for to try to help make a difference in so many people's lives. As long as I can be helpful. Hit thumbs up on this. Hit thumbs up on this if you feel this advice is good. Hit thumbs up. And feel free to write in your stories about an abusive person you've been with, the things you've been through, a sign you see, babe. We got to educate each other, okay? So listen, listen, listen. So, um, where's I at? Oh, yeah. So that's another sign. When the questions turn to accusations, it's okay for someone to have questions about relevant topics within a relationship. It's not okay for them to turn questions into accusations, especially when those accusations are unfounded. If you've done nothing wrong, then someone should not be questioning you in that way. You know, some people say, oh, I'm just questioning you because I love you. I'm questioning you because I got trust issues. Baby, I know you love me, but your trust issues ain't got nothing to do with me. Talk to a therapist about it, okay? Just, I don't care what somebody's line of reason is. They should not have questions turning into accusations, okay? Like Dolores Ryan said it's interrogation and you shouldn't stand for it okay let's keep going all right so this is another one here honey requests no it was demands let's call it what it is not requests is demands disguised as requests let's talk about it so as time went forward and i would say you know i want to hang out with my friends and their guys so on and so forth um, he says to me, somebody joined here, I feel like you're telling my story. I feel like a couple, a couple of y'all wrote in here, I feel like you're telling my story. If you feel like this is, if you feel like this is something similar to you, write, write in here, me too, baby. Write in here, me too, if you feel like you've been through some, some of these things, okay? So he said to me a little while later, he said to me, he's like, you know, baby, um, I love you to death. You know, I got, you know, I admit I have, you know, some trust issues and I just appreciate you sticking by me through this, you know, um, you know. I feel like, you know, I just really want to invest our time again. And be careful when they say I love you to death. <laughs> because they could mean that literally. Literally. <laughs> be careful. They know each other, spending time with each other. You know, um, how would you feel about, you know, both of us? Put on both of us. You know, let's, let's not be worried about adding on all these new friends. Let's just worry about focusing on the friendships that we already got. I said, like, what you mean? He's like, you know, it's, you know, I don't want to have to deal with vetting through all these new people you dating and all that other stuff. And not the dating, I'm sorry, but all these new people you get to know. Because I was a very outgoing person, meeting new people and everything like that. I was out and about, you know. And he says, you know, let's just st stick with the friends you got. I said, why? Because, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we got each other, you know, you know, and all these shady people out here. You know, you never know what people, um, what people do. And how, you know, and all that other stuff. And so his request to me was basically... To limit new people that I'm adding to my life. Basically, they wasn't already there. Stick with the ones that, that's already there. Right? And here's the thing. It was an asinine, inappropriate request. All right? But what it was was a demand. And let me tell you how I know it was a demand. Because I said, okay, I'll consider that. Again, I was young. I was young. I was young. And then I said, I'll consider that. Okay. Okay. I, I guess it didn't sound crazy to me. I didn't know. Um, and did I throw in that he was about 10 years older than me? Did I throw that part in there? Okay. Let me throw that in. He was older than me. Okay. Okay. So he was 25. That means that the other, the, oh, the, the other, his part, whatever, what, that nut job, he was 35. Now I can identify when he, he says that they tried to make a request, make a demand seem like a request. Because I recall an incident when I went out with my uh, ex, Narc, and we were in this really nice restaurant, and there were several people there from uh, my congregation. And I was going from table to table trying to mingle with everyone so no, so no one would feel left out. And he was sitting at the table, and he was fuming. He was very, very angry, you know? And I remember I was standing at a counter with my daughter trying to spent some time with my daughter and he, he had, he was losing it. I had to go back to the table he was sitting at and try to calm this, this mental patient. I had to calm him down. Thank God I know how to diffuse a situation. 
But it was it was disgusting. It, it was not embarrassing because you're not going to embarrass me. He was going to embarrass himself because he would have let everybody see that he was a nut job. But I made sure that I diffused the situation and calmed his crazy behind down. A little bit more than 10 years, actually. So anyway, <sighs> fast forward. Um, about two weeks later, two weeks later, I was out and about, and I come home that night. And by the time I was basically living with him, because I was always with him. And um, I was like, oh, my God, I met a new friend. Because I thought we talked about this. I thought we agreed to this. I said, what? I said, well, I, well, I, I, said I think about it. Not that we agreed to this. And he was getting livid. This is the first time I had ever seen him really go off and raising. Yep, I experienced that, too. When he was totally, like he said, livid. He was livid when I went, because by then he was damn near living with me. He was really pretty much living with me. And I wanted to go out and hang out with some of my friends. And uh, actually, it was going to spend the weekend at my daughter's on, on Saturday and Sunday. You know? And he just caught all kind of attitudes. Or anytime I wanted to go hang out, and then I would come back home. And I always came home at a decent hour, before 10 o'clock. I mean, for God's sake, or maybe at 10 o'clock. Right. And I come home and he's laying in the bed with an attitude. And I was like, hey, did you eat? Did you eat dinner? No. And I said, well, why didn't you why didn't you eat? You know, aren't you hungry? Yes. So why can't you get up off your whatever? I didn't say it like that. I said, well, why don't you let me go in the kitchen to get you something to eat when I should have said, yeah, well, that's too bad. I guess if you was hungry enough, you would have got up off your behind and you would have went in the kitchen and, and cooked yourself something to eat. You know, but me trying to make this marriage work or this relationship at the time. Yeah, it was marriage. And I was just like, oh, please, whatever. I was just done. I was so done. Oh. His boyfriend banging his hand on the counter and stuff like that. He's just talking. <laughs> what I realized is that it wasn't a request that he had made about other people. It was demand. It was a demand. Yeah. It was a demand, <clears throat> right? And here's the thing about why that's a trait of someone who's abusive is because anyone who's in a functioning um, mature, healthy adult relationship respects that each adult has the right to make their own choices. You see where I'm going with that? Everyone can make their own choices. So when we move into the space of trying to tell someone what they have to do, what they're going to do, we get into all that kind of stuff, we're moving into making demands on people. You see what I'm saying right there? That's when it moves into a very unhealthy place. No adult should be making demands on you, all right? We have the right to make whatever choices we want to make for ourselves, okay? I got a whole list here, Okay. So, it gets worse, girls. Time's going forward. <laughs> I'm all out in love with him at this point. I'm all out in love with him at this point, okay? And it was more than just the dick. I'm going to tell you, it was more than that. Because by this time, I was fine, but I was in love with him. I was in time with him. We had into towards almost a year at this point in time. You see what I'm Yeah, I was never in love with my husband because every time I would try to be in love, he would do something stupid. And then I would have to keep keep my guard up. I could never just exhale with that character. I was I loved him as a person, you know, like a gape type love. But I never got a chance to be in love with him. I was never in love with him. Gregory, now that's a different story. But my 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 recently ex husband, nah, I was never in love with him ever because he didn't give me a chance. He was a constant screw up. I'm going with the, I'm in love with him. And yeah, I knew he had some challenging traits. And yeah, some of my friends were pointing out po things about him that they didn't like, some of the controlling aspects of him. But I was in love with him. I felt like as time went along, he became more and more controlling. Yep. Right? And when I say controlling, he wasn't even making requests anymore. It was all out just control. Okay? I went through the same thing again. My family coming over, came over to the house. And he had an uh, an episode, I call them, until uh, the point where it, 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 everybody in the, my family, family and everyone in the house was totally uncomfortable. My family was leaving. They said, you know, mom and, and my uh, cuss people said, are you going to be okay, Sheila? Are you going to be all right? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be fine. Just let me handle this situation. And everybody left because he caught an attitude because... I was in my son's room looking at something on the computer and everybody came into the room to look at what was on the computer. He could have got up and came in the room with everybody else, 
But then he had an episode blowing up. Why is everybody over here? You know, are you guys leaving me sitting here? What am I a nobody? I was like, what? 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 You know, blew up. So I, my, my company, my family wasn't comfortable. And my family had to leave because it could have got violent. It really could have got violent, you know? There was one situation where we had to stop my son from going in the kitchen and getting a knife to stab his ass up because he was out of control. He was just out of control, you know? We're at a family meeting. Everyone is allowed to express themselves. And when my son said, he was jealous, so jealous of my son. God, the man was jealous. And he was jealous of my brother. Anyway, it, it was just crazy. Like you said, like he said, it just gets to a point where it's just outright controlling. Well, he could never control me. He tried it with everything he had, but this is one chick that he could never whip down, beat down. If anything, I had more control over him. You don't get it right. You, he knows where the door is. I kicked him out of here seven times. Seven times. And that seventh time was the final time. And the only reason why he got that many breaks is because he had two disabilities. Okay. Um, if I was talking to somebody, he didn't want me talking to them at an event or something like that at a party, he would literally come up, grab my arm, baby, um, let's go over here real fast. It was controlling. Well, I want to go out to someone, so I'm going out to, you know, do this and do that, do the other. I don't want you going there. Why? Because I just don't want you going there. I'm saying no. You're not, you're not going there. It was controlling, okay? <laughs> he was trying to tell me what to do, where to go, and who to go with. That's another sign, baby, okay? Don't nobody need to be controlling you, okay? I don't care how much they love you. I don't care how you feel of you. Sometimes we got, I bring this up, sometimes our, our trauma gets involved and tries to make us feel that the control that we're experiencing is a reflection of love. Oh, he loves me. He's really into me. Hit, hit thumbs up if you agree with this. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. You see what I'm saying? Um... And everything like that. And then they say, you know what? Well, I just I just love you. I'm just in love with you. I just, you know, what else they say? I just, I fall hard and I love hard. Fuck that shit, okay? That ain't what it is. <laughs> Falling hard, no, baby. You're controlling, okay? If somebody trying to control you, baby, check that shit and check it early, okay? It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable, okay? Now, here's where it gets even worse, okay? So, if his fussing... Hold on, Thea. Initially, was just fussing. Then I noticed his fussing every now and again would turn to a grab. Grab my arm, you know. Listen to me, da 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 da. Now, I was young. I wasn't no fighter at all. And I was in love with him. So I never thought he was trying to hurt me initially. Listen to me. Don't walk away from me. Because sometimes I would walk away so he could calm himself down. Grab my arm. Get back over here. Right? And I remember one time. Well, he's fortunate he just grabbed his arm. My ex used to punch holes in the wall. He used to punch the closets off of the runner. You know, he used to scream and, and, and yell so intensely until he actually had foam. Listen to me when I tell you, Tubies, he actually had foam coming out the sides of his mouth. I was like, what? I've never in my life <laughs> and he didn't care whether he was outside in the middle of the street. If you, he was around people, he didn't give a damn. <sighs> and again, I had to calm him down and, and, and rub his belly. Like, a, a, I was like, Whoa, dude, you need to relax because you're going to catch a stroke. If you keep that up, heart attack city, here we come. You know, you could say to me, Everything that you want to say, but you can say it calmly. Say everything you want to say, just say it calmly. He was like, oh, I've never seen anything like it in my life, Tubies. It was a Sunday. We were sitting there, and he was fussing about something. It was kind of just a thing at this point in time. And he is screaming and yelling and fussing. I remember we were standing on the steps, right? And he's screaming and fussing. And he's looking at me like this going off, okay? Da, 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 da. In my face, screaming. I mean, I remember because I could feel the spit hitting my face. Oh, my God. Whew. I'm getting flashbacks on. I really am. So he's doing all this screaming, all this yelling, all this everything. And guess what, y'all? 
I wasn't telling nobody about it. That's a sign right there, too. When you deal with somebody, you don't want to tell nobody about what you're experiencing because you don't want your friends and family to judge him. I don't want them to think negative. No, I told my family about it. I told everybody. <laughs> well, not everybody. I would just tell it to my family. And uh, we had to go before the elders at one time because he was totally out of control. And I thought maybe the elders in the congregation could try to talk some sense into his head. But nothing worked. Nothing. Nothing. The dude was possessed. He was just a demon. Because this don't happen all the time. If you can't tell your family and friends about what you experiencing out of fear of them having a negative opinion on the man, check that shit, honey. Because what you don't, basically, it's not their opinions you're worried about. It's their accountability you're worried about. Hmm. How about that? All right? So anyway, he's going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Yelling, yelling, yelling. I turn to walk away. He grabs my arm and turns me back around. You're going to listen to me. Da, 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 da. And I realized I didn't have the choice but to sit there. Because if I didn't, he was going to become more physical. So I sat there and I just sat down on the, on the step and did just like this and just listen. My spirit was just dying in that moment. And he's screaming and screaming and screaming until the point where I couldn't even hear him no more. Next thing I know, just tears are running down my face. Just running down my face. Just running down my face. Because I was just in so much pain because I'm like, this man who I love so much is treating me so terrible. You ever had somebody treat you so bad, you're not even listening to what they're saying? you just in so much pain about what they're saying to you? You know? No, I've never been in that because I'm not going to let nobody keep treating me so bad, you know? And <clears throat> when he said he sat down, MJ said he had to sit down and just listen to this character. I, my, our personalities are different because... You know, I'm, I'm, I, you, you, you're gonna sit up here and try to abuse Sheila True Love. Sheila True Love is a fighter. You put your hands on Sheila True Love, but you get too crazy with Sheila True Love. Sheila True Love know how to come out of pocket too. So I, I have to let the character know, you know, that's not such a good idea. That's not a good idea, honey, because you don't want to see my other side. You really don't want to see my other side. Now, I'm trying to be a lady, and I'm trying to remain a lady and trying to treat you with the respect that God said I'm supposed to treat you with. You know, at the same time, I'm an imperfect human being. And I remember there's a time he had put his hand on me. Oh, baby, please. It was on and popping. I'll tell you one thing. He ended up in the hospital, not me. For well, what they doing to you? I'm just Eventually he stops. He's like, he's like, what you doing? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? He wipes my face off. He becomes, he becomes, he goes from, from cruel and mean to just, to so charming. Why are you wiping, wiping my face off? He kisses me on the lips and says, this baby, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do like this if I didn't love you so much. You see, that was getting his narcissistic supply. So when he saw how he could have MJ sitting there crying and, 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 and just killing MJ's spirit, that was like, blood to a vampire you know uh what we've discussed when it comes to the narcissistic supply the more they can hurt you the more they could try to tear down your self-esteem the more stronger they become that's like giving them more and more blood you're sitting up here looking for love they're not looking for love they're looking for praise anything they could prey on you know these are these people are predators they're looking for the weak-minded like you know he said this character was 10 years older than him i guess his little mind was weaker than this character and that's what predators do you out here looking for love and hoping for love and they're out there just merely looking for prey baby you know but you be, you be getting me so mad and everything like that you know because you don't be giving me enough information sometimes and everything like that and then he goes on he's saying you know and, if, and baby i love you and i'm a good man and you, you know i try to treat you good he's on this all this shit, all right and that's another <laughs> sign right there when they try to blame you for how they are and who they are they don't take any accountability that's another sign girls when they try to blame you they try to blame you you hear where i'm going with this they trying to blame you I wouldn't be like this if it, if you didn't do this. If you didn't push my buttons, I wouldn't have said that. If you didn't say this, I wouldn't have done that. Okay, let me tell you this. You're a grown-ass motherfucking man, okay? And as a grown-ass man, if I, if anybody can say something to you that's going to make you lose your cool, swing on somebody, hit them, push them, you know, um, verbally abuse them, 
then baby, what you don't have is control over yourself. And if you don't have control over yourself, you don't need to be in a relationship. Period. Dot. End of story. No exceptions to that, okay? I hear you. Clap, clap, clap. If you don't have any control over yourself, then you don't need to be in a relationship. You're the type of person who should fly solo. Let no man tell you that. Don't you let no man tell you that, okay? That's some little boy shit right there, okay? He needs to take his black his ass to therapy, black, white, blue, or purple. He needs to take his ass to therapy. And while he's in therapy, you don't need to be with him, okay? Some of y'all say, I'm going to stand by your side as you go through this. Uh-uh, fuck that, baby, okay? It took him 35, 40, 60 years to get to this point of being like this. You think that he's going to get over in six months, baby? You better off letting him go, healing, and going through your own therapy about why you was with him in the first place so you can move on to somebody who's going to treat you right from jump, okay? I like that point that he made. This person has been like that for, what, 30, 40, 50 years, you know? My ex, he was like that for, for all his life. He was just a mean, mean spirited. You know, someone who's mean spirited. And even when he walks around the house, you know, he looks all mean looking. And, and then he got these, his disability and, and he's like slithering around the house with a mean face. And uh, uh, no, 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 I, uh, no, no. Sheila Chulo couldn't have that around her. Even people outside have told him, wow, you look mean, dude. Why is it every time I see you, you look so mean? God. I ain't done yet. I'm Stop, looking at my yeah. notes here. All right? So time goes along, time goes along. Child, you would never believe, y'all listen, y'all would never believe who came to me and said to me, why are you with him in the first place? Hmm. You never believe this one. I can throw my glasses for this one. Where's my drink? Well, I'm going to put make a part two for this one because we're already on 40 over 40 minutes and I will be back with part two. See you on the other side, Tubies. Don't forget to subscribe and to press the like button. And don't forget to share the video with someone who you think it may help out. Okay, we're all teaching each other. I'll see you on the other side.